Okay, I filled our squeegee guy with color. I used some gradations using what's called the interactive fill tool, which is a Corel tool where you just click and drag and give it a gradation or shading. And keep in mind though that on the computer monitor it may show as a shading, but we have to print it out as halftone dots. And again, your printer must be able to print halftone dots. Let's go back to the monitor right now. We're going to go to the file pull down menu, come down to print. We're going to tell it we're going to print to the Epson 3000 printer. We're going to click on the separations tab. We're going to check on separations. We have to tell it the line count and the angle for the halftone dots. And by the way, let's go back to the general tab. Let's go to the properties tab. Let's go to the advanced button. Let's tell it we're going to print to 13 by 18 film. Now it looks correct on the right of the screen. Now we're going to go back to the separations tab, check separations, click on the advanced button. If we can't get to the advanced button, this is very important. It means you do not have postscript. We get more phone calls from people that say, I've got a printer and I can't get to the advanced button. And the, re the re answer is very simple. You do not have postscript in your printer. And Corel says no postscript, no halftone dots. Let's make this simple design a 35 line halftone. Let's make the angle of the dots because the dots all have a certain angle to them, 25 degrees. So we'll make a 35 line, 25 degrees, 35 line, 25 degrees for all four colors. And again, this is covered in much more detail on our Corel training videos. And so now we have it set to separate. We've told it to put registration targets in the corner. And now we're going to say print. And the job gets sent to our Epson 3000. Okay, we've output our films on the Epson 3000 using Fast Rip, and we now have four films that have half-tone dots, pretty good sized dots. Remember I told it it was 35 dots per inch, commonly called the frequency of dots, not having to, nothing to do with DPI, that's dots per inch having to do with resolution, but it's commonly called the LPI, really lines per inch, our frequency. So we have the, the film for the red, the film for the brown, and there's registration targets in the corners of the film, so we can use these to line the job up at the press. I've got the actual film for the black, commonly called the key line or the outline color. This could just be a one color print. And I've got the film for uh, the yellow. And so we're ready to go, ready to burn these on screens and set this job up at press and do a multicolor print. Let's go back and talk about Photoshop for a second though. Come back to the monitor. We're gonna look at a program called Photoshop. You know, we scanned into Photoshop a second ago. Now this, this program does not cover Photoshop. I'm just here to show you what Photoshop is all about and kind of tease you with Photoshop. This design was built in Photoshop and as you can see, Photoshop likes photorealistic images. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this thing was built real quick in Photoshop. This design started off as a scan of a photograph of a motorcycle. And wherever you see checkered, back, checkered little marks here, this means that there's no background, meaning that this motorcycle is transparent meaning I can move them around. You get photographs and you gotta remove the backgrounds and our Photoshop training DVDs, five hours, covers how to do this. We can now add a background. We can add a black background. We can add the wording and because it's on what's called a layer, these are called layers in Photoshop, I can move these things around. And so designs in Photoshop are built using what's called layers and Photoshop lets you build images that are photorealistic. And so Photoshop is different than Corel Draw. Now, if your customer wants his photograph on a shirt with great text effects, arch text, inline outline text, which Corel Draw and Illustrator do, you could take the photograph from Photoshop, you could use the scan the Photoshop, take the photograph into Corel Draw, add the various components to it, and then output separations that way. Photoshop is typically used for what's called real process, CMYK separations. It's typically used for simulated process, like the shirt that I'm wearing, where it's a black shirt. It's typically used for that, and the best way to do stuff like this and do separations is by our program 
called Fast Films. Fast Films does automatic color separations for shirts like this, pulling out the colors, adjusting for how the dots print on top of each other, and that's how people do high-end separations. That's a very quick overview of Adobe Photoshop.